As the train whistle blows, we're giving you a bird's eye view of the CRRC Jujo Electric Locomotive Company. It is a sprawling campus, as you can see, a number of buildings here. We're inside one of those buildings, and to give you a sense of the dimensions, it's 360 meters in length, 22 meters in width. It is huge. Hello, and welcome to CG10 Special Series, Way to Modernization. I'm Tang Bo. And I'm Mike Walter. Mike, you know what? This place is bringing back so many memories of my childhood. You know, when I was a kid, my room was fully occupied with all kinds of toy trains. And one of my biggest dreams was to become a train driver. So I'm wondering if I got the chance to realize the dream today. Move from the toy trains to the big one right there behind us. I'm hoping that we can make your dream a reality. You know, going from a huge building to a huge train to a huge dream. It's really interesting to see what uh, this company has done as well because it's really kind of done the same thing. It's taken a dream and made it huge. You think about Zhuzhou, it's a third tier city in southern China, but this is a first rate company really at the heart of the rail transit industry here in China. And this facility is also responsible for creating. China's very first locomotives, uh, electric locomotives, and also China's first commercially operated uh, slow speed and medium maglev train. And this place is also the world's largest uh, electric locomotive research and development base. Yes, yeah, so it's a remarkable story. And to trace this whole trajectory, we've got a short video we want to share with you. Take a look. Another round of daily production and a step closer for the meter gauge train to roll off the production line. This is the third generation destined for Malaysia's electric train service. For this train, that is the uh, third version from our product. Um, uh, compared with the previous project, we installed a lot of intelligent and economical device or system on the train. So something like the DAS system that we uh, uh, we, uh, the system can give the economical driving advice to the to the driver, so the driver follow this advice can uh, reduce the uh, energy consumption more than 10% uh, for the operator. It's just one of many trains and locomotives produced by the company that are now used globally, from Turkey to Brazil, from Belgium to Mexico. CRRC Zhuzhou has a global presence with its products spanning six continents and over 50 countries and regions. The most recent batch of locomotives for export to the Netherlands right behind me has successfully rolled up the production line. And remarkably, it all started 66 years ago when China's first electric locomotive was produced right here. Founded in 1936, CRRC Zhuzhou and its predecessors have witnessed major advances in China's electric locomotive industry, transitioning from general to heavy loads, from direct to alternating currents, from normal to high-speed rail, and from a sector relying on imports to becoming a major exporter. The cradle of Chinese electric locomotive is now seen as a dream factory for the global rail transit system in high demand across the globe. Welcome back. Uh, CRRC Zhuzhou uh, for two decades has witnessed uh, some major advancements in China's electric locomotive industry, transitioning from a general load to heavy load, just like I just mentioned, and from high speed, from normal speed to high speed, and from being reliant on imports to becoming a major exporter. I'm going to have you hold oh, yeah. on to this okay, because, sure. you know, even though it's a big train, sometimes a small model is the best way to describe things. And, and I want you to kind of think back to your childhood in those Legos where you could take maybe a red block and change it out with a blue block. That's basically what we're talking about here when you talk about propulsion. So they can actually take components out. So let's take it. It's like, say, it's internal combustion. They want to change that out for electric. They can do that. They can also make it a hybrid. So that's a really cool feature. And this is kind of the best way to illustrate that. Yeah, very interesting. Very and kind of in addition to the modular production, there are many other cool technologies we can check out. Yeah. So let's, let's go take a look. Yeah, take a look. We're going to take our way over here. It's going to take us a minute or two to climb up the stairs. And while we do that, let's talk about what makes this company so interesting. Because when you think about it, they're taking the revenues, at least 8% of their revenues, 
and sinking it back into research and development, and that's why they can come up with the techniques and the technology that you've been talking about. Yes, right now we are in this control, control room, and we have with us today Mr. Zhang Han, who is the technical manager of CRRC Zhuzhou, who is also the main designer of this locomotive. Yes, Welcome. Uh, yeah, tell us about it. Okay, uh, this hybrid locomotive we call modular EBB. It has two big highlights. The first one is flexible modular design to achieve the fast change of variant energy supply modes like catenary, traction battery, and hydrogen power, and uh, diesel power, and so on, just like a Lego model. Yeah. And the second point is that it has been integrated with three different signal systems. So it means this locomotive can be used in any European countries. Wow. Sorry yeah. to interrupt. I yeah. really want to go there and take the seat. <laughs> okay. Can I? Yeah. This, is yeah. this is my dream. This is my dream. The okay. dream becoming a reality. And wow. yeah. Look at this. Yeah. It's so cool. He, he seems pretty comfortable there, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, very much. This, you know, uh, one of my dreams came true, Mike, <laughs> today. Yeah. Speaking of dreams coming true, uh, to see your ideas, your designs, stretching not just in China, but in other countries uh, around the world, give us a sense of the pride that that uh, has induced for the people who work here. Okay, uh, if you're using one word to describe, I think it must be valuable. Because you know our team has put a great of effort and time into this project. And we are very proud to see it grow from a 3D model in the computer to a real locomotive and then go around all the world. We are looking forward to connect the world through better mobility. Wow. What a I delight. Like that. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're so going to continue our yeah, tour, sure, right? Let's go. Yeah. I don't know. We got you out of the chair. I can't believe <laughs> it. I'm a little uh, bit disappointed, <laughs> but I want to stay there longer. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's, there's time. Maybe we'll get you back in here. Okay. So uh, on my left side, this is the one of the most important part of this yeah. locomotive, the uh, power system. And the one detail I'd like to share with you, and you look at this rubber edge of different modules, if you see them, which means that this locomotive is kind of a modularized, it's a modular production. And exactly what we were talking about, you know, the Lego concept. So this can move out, something yeah. else can move in. And the interesting thing is you might think that takes quite a while. It does not. Our friend in there was just telling us it takes maybe two days, 48 hours. Yeah, 48 hours, yes. And uh, as I just mentioned, that uh, the company has a really great global presence. Uh, presence. Uh, its products have been used across six continents, over 50 countries and regions. And that's very, very impressive. And this one is destined for where? Uh, for the Netherlands, yeah. for, for the, the uh, uh, Netherlands, and yeah. so it's on its way. You know, we're talking a lot about the domestic market, but the interesting thing about China, we all know about the opening and reforms here, and one of the things that they, uh, the government has tried to do is is get foreign investment here, and also make sure that those foreign investors feel as though this is a market that they can actually work in and actually maintain and improve upon, and of course it's a huge market. Indeed, back in 2017, the China has already uh, lifted the, the restriction on foreign investment in the sector of uh, rail transit equipment manufacturing. And starting from November the 1st, this year, China will lift all the restrictions on uh, foreign investment in the sector of manufacturing as a whole. Yeah, and, and also to that point, the political bureau of the central uh, PC, the CPC's uh, central committee actually had a meeting on September 26th where they talked about foreign investment and they want to actually maintain and improve and promote uh, in foreign investment into manufacturing here in China, which of course is another step in this continuing effort at reforms and opening up. And we've, we've also talked about, you know, the engines and everything. The interesting thing about uh, rail, and one of the things he was talking about is designing it for here and elsewhere, is that the gauge systems are different. You've got broad gauge and you've got meter gauge. And our good friend, Jason Smith, is in a different locale where a train is destined for Malaysia. Jason, tell us about it. Hi, Jason. Hi, Mike and Bo. This is the third generation meter gauge train made by China for Malaysia. It's going to go into service on Malaysia's west coast and has increased passenger capacity to help Malaysia modernize its infrastructure. Six cars combined to a train travel at 140 kilometers per hour with a top speed of 160 kilometers per hour. And they're going to let us go on and see some of the special features on board. Come on.
Now we have a special guest here to tell us about the special features of this train. Sir, what is your name? Hello. Hello. My name is Seven, and I'm in charge of the electrical system design of ETS3. Can you tell us about the intelligent features of this train as our cameraman shows the car? Yep. So ETS3 EMU belongs to the ETS series product. And for this version, we have installed the intelligent and economical system like the DAS system, which can provide the economical driving advice to the driver. So it helps the operator uh, reduce more than 10% energy consumption with our new ETS train. Now I understand you've installed special features on this train specifically for your Malaysian clients. Can yep. you show them to us? Yep, come with me. So, as you can see on the side wall and end wall, we have mixed a lot of uh, Malaysia's elements. Mm. Uh, for example, the national flower of Malaysia, the Bongaraya. So it makes our train more Malaysia style. And furthermore is that we have use this fully enclosed luggage compartment so the passenger can save or keep their luggage during the trip better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you were showing me these chairs before. They have a lot of special features. Could you show a couple of them to us? Yep. So um, all these seats are rotatable and adjustable. Mm -hmm. So it's very convenient for the passenger to get together and talk face to face during the journey. And for the right side, we have developed the entertainment system, our AVOD. Wow. wow. So um, it can provide the movie, music, the food ordering, serving on the internet, and also can download the third party app like the YouTube and Netflix. And for the left side, we have prepared the food tray for the passenger so the passenger can take some food during the trip as they wish. This is absolutely amazing. So Malaysia and China working together through the Belt and Road Initiative are enhancing the lives and modernity of people in Malaysia and China. Back to you, Bo and Mike. Thank you, Jason. Well, CRRC Zhuzhou has been playing a very important role in China's electric locomotive industry, not just because of its um, technological innovation, but also uh, the very strong local industrial chain and supporting enterprises back in the mob has been offering a huge help too. All right, you're probably wondering why the coffee cups. It's because, cheers, my cheers. good friend, because there's a great story here at CRRC. About a decade ago, the head of the company had a bit of a problem. They were in need of parts. You were talking about this supply chain. So he decided he'd reach out to the leaders of 10 of these organizations and have them come and kind of have a meeting and brainstorm and figure out a way, a solution. And so he decided, you know, hey, why don't we brew a pot of coffee? So yeah. when they get here, they can all sit around the conference table and we can have a cup of coffee. Well, even before the pot of coffee was brewed, they were in their seats, ready to go, brainstorm, come up with a solution. And it's become a unit of time now yes. uh, here at this place. Yes. Well, we have a sip, and you kind of, kind of explained it. Right? Yes. Uh, uh, you know, uh, what we're trying to say is that uh, Mike was talking about the unit of time as a concept. It could be a time of making a cup of coffee or making a time of making a cup of tea. That doesn't really matter. So what we are trying to say is that Thanks to the local industrial chain and supporting uh, enterprises uh, loco located locally, that all the productions here can be carried out very smoothly and also problems can be solved quickly as well. And perfectly explained. And I think that's going to do it for us. I'm, I'm thankful this guy's standing next to me. I was afraid we were going to leave him in the chair there. But I got to tell you, Jujo has now transformed itself. It's kind of nicknamed as the cradle of the electric locomo locomotive here in China. And it's also become basically a dream factory for transit, rail transit around the world. And that's all from us in Jujo. Thanks so much for watching. Back to you, stu the studio.